I got to tell a quick story. So I was in Charleston. I was in Charleston in meetings last week, and we went to a restaurant called Tidewater. It's a really nice restaurant. Um, And I'm walking in, and I look over to the side, and there's a table full of people. And next thing I know, Wayne jumps up and runs over. We have a really (laughs) nice conversation. It was great to see him in person. Wayne, how are you, buddy? I'm doing great. How are you all? Excellent. Do you know your your last name could be either Wayne Clark or Wayne Hardy, depending on how my brain is at that moment yeah, I had an issue. I heard that. I think uh, I think John might be a little insulted if uh, <laughs> I took his name, you know, um, but that's okay. <laughs> hey, I, I saw the uh, delegate householder sent me a copy of the revenue numbers for January. It's another $162 million of additional revenue that brings the year-to-date surplus to nearly a billion now, Wayne. Yes, uh, I, we're still. I think we're tracking towards two billion this year uh, w- with ease. Um, so, you know, it's. Let's see what uh, what what Senate's going to help us do. Um, are they going to uh, give us a, this state a nice little tax break? Let's see what happens. Yeah, you guys seem to be stalemated, and we're running on our news because on Wednesdays I have Senator Jason Barrett on and Delegate Mike Hornby, the proprietor of this year establishment. And when listening to the two talk, uh, Senator Barrett, who spent a long time in the House, Senator Barrett sounded to be irritated, whether he was or not is another story, but he sounded irritated at the fact that the House and the governor seem to be on board with too many spending bills considering the size of the tax cut that's being proposed. And when we had Mike on, Delegate Hornby, he seemed irritated at the Senate's condescending attitude toward the House. In fact, I think the one cut uh, had something to do with him saying that the House thinks that they seem to think they know better than what the House and the governor uh, know. Are you sensing animosity between the House and the Senate right now? I don't know if there. I don't know if I want to use the word animosity between the two of them. Uh, I can tell you that yes, you, uh, there's uh, there's a lot of things that have gone through. Um, I, I can tell you in education. I mean, some of the bills that we've passed through um, have significant fiscal notes. Um, you know, and, and at a time when we're looking at you know making a significant tax. Uh, uh, break that's going to cost, you know, is it going to cost a billion dollars at the end of it? You know, we, we really don't know because um, that's three, four you know, years down the road. Um, a funny thing is, is that, uh, and, and I was actually uh, talking to the uh, majority leader yesterday and I said, you know what, sir, if we would have done your plan in 21, we'd be exactly where this bill is proposing and we would know because of the uh, money that we were putting aside, um, we would know if it was going to be successful or not uh, for the long haul. But you know that's 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 government. I mean, we 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 think of the idea, we hope the idea is going to flow, and next thing you know, something else comes in the way, or you know, uh, people get cold feet. I mean, it's it, it's a that's why I love being down here uh, to watch the dynamics happen. Wayne, I want to talk to you a bit about uh, a vote yesterday in regards to a zoning bill that uh, you were the sponsor on. And maybe you can get us, give us a little depth about the bill itself and, uh, and what happened with the vote. Yeah, so uh, House Bill 2459, um, it's actually a carryover bill from last year, House Bill 4553. Uh, we passed it through the House, and we ran out of time, uh, which happens to a lot of bills. Um, last year, uh, we, we got down to the last minute on the Energy Committee, um, and we were hoping that they were going to vote on it and move it to the floor, but it, it just ran out of time. The, the purpose of the bill is to add a new line in counties that have zoning ordinances. So um, many counties have zoning ordinances that were written 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago. And this new line would allow for energy wholesale generators. Now, we all hear energy wholesale generators are X or Y. Energy wholesale generator is any business that produces energy that's not a utility. So if 
let's say ABC uh, Nuclear wants to come into um, Jefferson County because we have zoning, and they want to put a nuclear power plant on. If they're a small scale, they would have to go through this very long process, um, which includes going through Jefferson County, going through BZA, and then going through the PSC. Um, and when they're done, they're getting a conditional use permit. They're not actually a full-blown permit because energy wholesale generators are not a, um, a, a, an allowable zone. Okay, so at times throughout this whole process, they can say, oh, well, we, someone can make a, a suit that you can't change the zoning laws. You can't give a conditional use permit under this process. So then they got to start the whole process over again. All right. So by having this bill and Jefferson County says, okay, we want to allow energy wholesale generators uh, in our our county as a county zone. Um, now they still have to go through the site uh, uh, certification and and setbacks and do all the other stuff. So you know there's there's no we're not taking control away from the counties. They still have the ability to do everything they want to do. You know they they can deny the project. You know if they don't want it, they can. You know so that all that stuff can still go. But all it says is that this is a zoning code that should that can be used um, in counties that have zoning. So um, I felt I made a pretty decent argument for the uh, purpose and the benefit of the bill. Um, you know, we're talking about potential of six to eight billion dollars in shovel-ready projects uh, throughout the state um, that are going to be affected by this. Uh, the the uh, by this bill being. Um, 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 essentially uh, died yesterday in judiciary. It was a 12-12 vote, 12-4-12 against, and, you know, our rules are a tie vote is a loss. What were some of the concerns about it, Wayne? Well, it, some of the concerns that people had brought up was that we were taking away the control of the counties, which were not. We were just giving them an additional uh, process, uh, you know, by allowing them to adopt zoning as energy wholesale generators and saving the company like, months. You know, just the, you know, Charlotte Lane had presented that the process just to go through PSC is five months. So it shortens that that process. Now, if that company went to a, a county that did not have zoning ordinances, and there's only six in the state that have it, they would not have to go through all the all the other stuff that they have to go through through Jefferson County. So, um, you know, there's a big misconception that, you know, this bill was only about solar. Well, it just happens that we have three solar projects that are uh, being um, applied for um, in Jefferson County. So when you look at it, oh, well, that's an energy wholesale generator, which it is. But it's not just about solar. It's about everything. It's about geothermal, hydrogen, um, uh, uh, hydro, um, you know, water, uh, electricity, um, you know, carbon capture, all, all these other types of energy generators. It all fits in um, the box. So, um, and oh, sorry, go when, on. When the uh, when, you know when the vote came out, that was the biggest concern was. We're taking away the control, which we weren't, um, and it doesn't. It was, like I said, they still have to go through the site certificate, all that process. So, you know, at this point, I, I don't know what we're going to do. Um, you know, and, yeah, I, I'm good. Take take Sorry. me through that. You said temporary. They could be granted a temporary use permit. Conditional use permit. Conditional, excuse me, conditional. Now, if there's a conditional use permit and a company puts, you know, a million dollars into a project and then all of a sudden that gets yanked, is there, I mean, is there a mechanism where they would know that it wasn't going to get yanked? It's just, I mean, I know as a business owner, if some, they tell me, well, you know, you can probably do it. We'll give it to you for this X time and then we'll make the final decision. A company's not going to want to put money into something like that unless they know they have a final approval, I would think. You're right, and that has happened. 
you know, that has happened. I mean, uh, the Wild Hill Project, um, they, they were three years um, through this process, and they almost left, and left with all that money that they've spent on, uh, on, on the site planning and everything just gone. So, you know, they're, they're, you could have people that, because you don't know, I mean, you can do all your due diligence, um, you know, and, and, you know, go through everything and say, okay, all right, if we're in this spot, you know, what is our site view? Who are we affecting, you know, maybe site or traffic or whatever, you know, are we increasing traffic? They're doing all of this stuff before they go to PSC. So then when they go to the PSC, then the PSC is reviewing, you know, all the positives and all the negatives, listen to the public comment from positives and negatives, and then making the best decision on whether or not that project can go through. And they can get to PSC, and PSC said no. And then from the PSC, you, what do you, where, do you, uh, where do you appeal? The state Supreme Court from there, or how does that uh, work? Yeah, that's what I, I – no, well, yeah, um, Maybe this would be something that goes through the intermediate court first, okay. uh, the new intermediate court that we we pass. So uh, I would assume there before it goes to the Supreme Court. So I mean, you could, I mean, somebody could have a great project, be willing, a company could be willing to pour millions and millions of dollars into something that would generate a lot more power, and it could languish for two, three years before they even knew if it was a go or not. Correct. That um, that hinders business. I don't like that. It does. I mean, it, it. I mean, whether it's a good project or a bad project, they should be able to know whether it's a whether it's a go or it's not a go in a much shorter period of time. I'm not advocating, you know, all projects should be a go, sure. you know, pro business no matter what. I'm just saying that they should. It sh- it should be a quicker process where somebody should know whether it's going to work there or whether they have to find another place. Yeah. Wayne, were you contacted by a business that wanted to see this pushed through? So last year, um, during during this process, um, a few of the um, uh, solar companies that were coming in Jefferson County and uh, some other uh, energy wholesale generators in other parts of the state uh, did contact me and, and talk with me through this process. Um, and that's how I kind of began this process was going through them. And uh, I mean, it was a, you know, it was it, it was a, a, a fun battle last year, you know, and it's been a fun battle this year. Um, you know, and why I say fun, I, I, cause this is what I like to do. I like to be down here busy trying to make things happen. So as you pointed out in, in West Virginia, I think you said only six counties have zoning. Yes. Okay. So of the votes that were negative, were any of those delegates who voted against from those counties that had zoning? Three. Three. And were there chief concerns that zoning was in place so that a certain process has to be followed before things can can occur? Why would we want to bypass that process that the people voted in? Remember, it's not a bypass, you know. So we're not we're not saying, okay. Well, it's a hurry up, though, isn't it? it, it, it yes, it accelerates the process, you know. So, um, but uh, that was again one of their arguments on their side. Yes. I mean, but I, I could make the case that by hurrying up a process that otherwise should take time, you are kind of bypassing a process that the people who wanted zoning voted in. Yeah, I can I can see your argument there. You know, um, the, you know, by having this, you know, the three-layer process, um, is was one was one of their arguments. We want to maintain that three lever, three layer mm-hmm. process on on these projects um, without um, having anything uh, you know sped up. So, but the thing is, is that they still have to go through the process. Um, the the difference is is that conditional use permit and that actual certificate. You know that it's a certified use; it's allowable use. 
So that is the that is the difference. But they still have to do all the site planning. They still have to go through all the buffering, um, you know, the the, the setbacks, um, the the reclamation process. You know, what happens when when these projects are are you know obsolete or you know they hit their retirement? How does it? How does the property get turned back to what it was? You know, uh, an example on a solar farm, they have about a twenty maybe 30 year life cycle in this process that is set up from the beginning there is a reclamation process that when it's done these panels come up they come out the grass is back fed or whatever it needs to be um, and that that farm is turned back to what it was when it was done but couldn't you at the end of that 20 30 years couldn't you just you know replace the solar panels sure. and keep it yeah that would be that would be the the homeowner's homeowner's right to say you know what I want to um, come I, I want you to take them all out put brand new ones in because I want to keep getting the rent from this process and the way the law is written would they have to go through the entire process of getting approval again once that is it is the approval for a specific period of time no because they because they're 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 already they're in okay. you know. Um, they have their use permit, you know, that this is a, you know, a solar farm, a wind farm, or whatever, whatever you want. Um, I don't, I don't think they would have to go through the whole process again, because all they're doing is replacing stuff that's not working efficiently. Hey, uh, Wayne, let's talk about a few other bills that you're working on, too, and, uh, and, and some that you want to make sure people know about. And I'll, I'll leave the choice. I have the list in front of me, but I'll leave the choice up to you. As we're down to about six minutes. I want to make sure you get the most important ones across first. Uh, Child, Child Online Privacy Protection Act. Um, that is that is a bill I, I submitted last year. Um, and that is something that's very important to me. Um, we're starting to see a lot of the internet companies um, starting, like Instagram, starting this family-friendly program that, you know, that it's helping to monitor what the kids are looking at online. Um, my bill, the Child Online Privacy Protection Act, changes the federal law that says that any that. Uh, internet companies cannot gather, share, market uh, to kids under the age of 13. Mine moves it to kids under the age of 18. Mm-hmm. So if if I buy a cell phone for my child, I register the cell phone in my child's name, and then when they want to download Instagram on their phone, Instagram has to reach out to me, contact me, and get my approval as the parent. Um, and also, if somebody wants to market to my child a chat group or whatever, th- again, they have to get that permission to me. Um, we we all know. I think I think a lot of the listeners know that you know when you're going into inappropriate sites, sometimes all you got to do is push a button. Yes, I'm 18. Yep. You know, you don't you don't have any verification process. Well, let's put a verification process on there, so so the kids are get, are not getting exposed to things that us as parents don't want them to be exposed to. Are there any penalties that can be enforced against some of these apps that have developed as a way of your kid getting around your controls? Dummy apps that don't say what they really are. So when you look at your kid's phone screen, it says, well, oh, this is an app that helps my child with math, when in reality they open it up and it's actually a way to get to TikTok? Um, that's a good one. Uh, I would assume that because of the in-depth of this that um, they would have to, because that's, an, again, that's something that they would have to get parent permission um, to to download that, that app that you're talking about, that example. So, you know, in regards to penalties, yes, there's penalties uh, in the Child Online Privacy Protection Act by the federal government, and those penalties can be severe. Well, let's hope some of them get enforced soon because the abuse of our kids through these apps is severe. And as you well know, Wayne, it's to the point where it's resulting in death and near-death situations. Uh, I know I don't have to go into detail with you about that. You recognize the uh, direness of the of the situation out there, but uh, I, I just watched another investigative TV show about this. Uh, I think on sixty minutes a month ago or so. Yeah, 
And there, there are parents out there that don't have children anymore because of some of these apps. Correct. You know, this, this is some devastating stuff. Uh, what else is on your political agenda uh, regarding bills? <laughs> Um, I have a bunch of bills going through education. I got some, uh, you know, obviously uh, as my new role as uh, vice chair of economic development and tourism, um, working on a on, on a bill that's going to help uh, Hilltop House. Um, don't want to spoil much about it. Uh, it is it has been introduced. It, um, but uh, it, this is helping uh, Hilltop House get uh, some additional uh, tax incentives so that they can. Uh, push um, on the, the 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 construction faster um, and get uh, get them open. Um, huge impact for Jefferson County in the in the tourism uh, dollars and you know hotel motel tax and just the tourism revenue of people coming in and staying. So um, that's a big one. Um, we did get the uh, motorsports bill uh, passed through the house and now we're sending waiting for Senate to go through. So. So there's a there's a lot of things that I have. I, I, I've never had so many bills under my name uh, as I do this year, and it's got, I guess it's kind of one of the good things about being a vice chair of major committee. Um, everybody wants you to help them with their bills. So um, you know, Indeed. having fun. Hey, about thirty seconds left. Final word is yours, Wayne. Anything else you want people to know about in Charleston? Uh, I'm going to tell you guys this. Everybody who voted all these new guys in um, from the Eastern Panhandle, great job. They're all, all Dell is coming down, just hitting uh, the floor running um, and ready to, you know, move things for the state. So great job on, for the voters. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. We've talked to Height and Hornby already, too. That's a dynamic duo there, baby. Yeah, they share an office together. It's like, <laughs> and and they share the office that me, Hardy, and Barrett had last year. It's just funny. It's like, oh there they are. <laughs> that's nice. A, that's a, if those walls could talk, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Wayne, thanks a ton, man. All right, thank you. Take guys. care, Wayne. All right, bye.